Hello, sir. Hello, Mrs. Smith. My name is Ben and I am a medical student. I will be taking care of you today along with my attending, Dr. Jones. Why, thank you, young man. How are you doing today, Mrs. Smith? Well, I have felt better. Did you know I was champion of the Iron Woman's Triathlon back in 1965? No, ma'am. I did not know that. That is a great accomplishment. And also in 1966. Two years in a row. Incredible. I am considering training for one this year, but I just haven't been feeling well lately. Over the past eight weeks, I have been becoming very short of breath. It has been worsening and I can no longer train for my triathlon. In fact, I can barely walk up the flight of stairs in my house without becoming short of breath. Back in the 60s, I could run up and down the stairs for hours. Can you tell me what other symptoms you are having? Yes. I have been having exertional chest pains. The pain is also keeping me from my training. I am hesitant to practice swimming because of the chest pain. Did you know that I swam the 600 meter in 1 minute and 29 seconds? That would have qualified me for the Olympics back then. It sounds like you were very talented, Mrs. Smith. I still am, and I plan on continuing my training as soon as I am feeling better. I just become so tired these days. Can you help me? Yes, but I would like to ask you a few more questions first. Have you noticed any blood in your stool or on the toilet paper when wiping after a bowel movement? Why, yes I have. It is in the stool and is dark red and sometimes unnoticeable. Do you have any history of heart disease? Yes, the last physician I saw said the big artery coming from my heart has a very small diameter and this may lead to fainting, chest pain, and shortness of breath. Okay, Mrs. Smith, now I would like to perform a physical exam, and then I will discuss your symptoms with my attending. On physical exam, your conjunctiva and oral mucosal membranes appear pale. You also have jugular venous distension. When I listen to your heart, I hear a harsh, late peaking systolic murmur over the cardiac base. When I listen to your lungs, I hear crackles bilaterally. Your abdomen is non-tender to palpation, and you do not have any organomegaly. You have bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Your extremities appear normal, without edema or cyanosis. Mrs. Smith, that concludes my physical exam. Do you have any questions for me? Not at the moment. I just want to feel better. Okay, please wait here while I discuss your symptoms and physical exam findings with my attending. I will return shortly. Hello again, Mrs. Smith. My attending, Dr. Jones, and I would like to have your blood drawn so we can run some tests on it. Would you consent to giving a sample of your blood? Yes, I will. Did you know that I ran a full marathon in 2 hours and 15 minutes? That is unbelievable. Did you know that I beat Modern Warfare 3 on PlayStation 3 in less than 6 hours? Will you please follow me to the lab? Mrs. Smith, within seconds of giving your blood, I have your lab results. We have the most advanced machines on the face of the planet in this clinic in Lubbock, Texas. Imagine your luck. Let's go over them with you. What do all those numbers mean? It appears that you have some type of anemia, which is a condition in which the body does not have enough healthy red blood cells and therefore, not enough oxygen to the body. This can lead to the symptoms you have been having such as the exertional chest pain, fatigue, and shortness of breath. It can also cause symptoms of dizziness, headaches, and difficulty concentrating. It is very helpful to determine the type of anemia present, in order that we may find the underlying cause and treat it effectively. We do this by looking at your lab values and peripheral blood smear. We also have to take into account any potential blood losses, in determining the type of anemia that you have. The following lab values are important to review. First, we look at the MCEV. The normal value is 80 to 100, signifying normocytic anemia. Less than 80 means microcytic anemia, while greater than 100 is macrocytic anemia. Next, we look at the hemoglobin level. A value of less than 12 in females and less than 14 in males is considered low. Then we may consider getting iron studies. 
Also, a reticulocyte count can be helpful in determining if your body is effectively reacting to the low hemoglobin levels by creating more red blood cells. If the reticulocyte count is high, with a low hemoglobin level, this may be due to blood or red blood cell destruction. We also look at a peripheral blood smear, which allows us to see the color, size, and shape of red blood cells. Mrs. Smith, your labs show that you have a low hemoglobin and a low MCEV, meaning that you have microcytic anemia. Your peripheral smear shows that your red blood cells are hypochromic, meaning they have less color than normal. Also, on physical exam, you have conjunctival pallor, and your stool is positive for occult blood. Most likely you do not have anemia of chronic disease, because there is no chronic disease in your history. In addition, the ESR of 33 mm per hour is within the normal range for patients of your age. My age? I know I am not a spring chicken anymore, but I am certainly capable of training for a marathon. In fact, here is a picture of me when I won my first Iron Woman's competition. Wow. You were in incredible shape. Were? And you still are, Mrs. Smith. Let's get back to the explanation of your current condition before I dig myself a deeper hole. That would be highly advisable. We would expect the ESR to be elevated if you had some form of chronic illness. The most common causes of anemia of chronic disease in older adults include acute and chronic infections, chronic inflammation, malignancy, protein calorie malnutrition, or an unidentified chronic disease. You do not have autoimmune hemolytic anemia because the peripheral smear would have shown something different, like schistocytes, spherocytes, sickled red blood cells, or Heinz bodies. You do not have a phthalate deficiency anemia. In this type of anemia, patients may present with a sore tongue, also known as stomatitis and glossitis. In addition, a peripheral smear would show macrocytic red blood cells with hypersegment and neutrophils, and the MCEV would be greater than 100. Nothing in your exam pointed in that direction. Nor do you have a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, as this type of anemia is typically seen in patients with hemolytic uremic syndrome, disseminated intravascular coagulation, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and malignant hypertension. The peripheral smear of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia would show schistocytes and the platelet count would also be greatly decreased, while the physical exam would show an enlarged spleen. After reviewing your lab data, I have determined that you have an iron deficiency anemia. Hematopoietic reserve capacity declines with age, so therefore any loss of blood can reduce red blood cells and hemoglobin levels in the body. Your hemoglobin is low, below 8 and the MCEV is less than 80, while the peripheral smear shows microcytic, hypochromic red blood cells. To confirm iron deficiency anemia, we would test for a total iron binding capacity, iron levels, and serum ferritin levels. Because you have blood in your stool, we will do further testing to determine the source of the GI bleed. So what happens next? We may need to hospitalize you and give you packed red blood cells as well as start you on an oral regimen of iron sulfate while attempting to locate the origin of blood loss. Okay as long as I start feeling better. I only have six months left of training before I need to be ready for the Iron Woman's competition. We cannot make any promises, but we will provide you with the best care possible. Thank you, young man. Have I ever told you that I could bike a mile a minute back when I won the Iron Woman's competition for the third year in a row?